Castillo Hall. Imagine pronouncing that like that. Uh, it's like the American commentators oh when you God. watch like Champions League over here. Castillo Hall, what a goal by the Spaniard! <laughs> For the Italian Giants. <laughs> That's like the American starter pack to watch oh Asian. Oh my god. Okay. You mean Calcio A. Calcio A. <laughs> what is up everybody and welcome back to Italian Football TV. We're back. We're back. If you're new on this channel, you might not even remember how we yeah. always did our review shows like this. Sort of because our podcast kind of took over. We were always doing our podcast, but we know that we had to get back into our chair talk. So we found some room, right? So we found some yeah. time, and we're going to make sure we do even more of this as the season continues. So round seven of the Serie A just ended, and what a week it was. We'll start off with the Derby della Capitale. I thought, Mike, I got to be honest, I was surprised in this match. Roma not coming on some good form. Di Francesco has been under the map lately, under the mm -hmm. fire. 3-1 win for Roma. Again, very surprised. Pellegrini subs in for Pastore. Pastore, <laughs> a guy who scored two backheel goals this season, and he scores a backheel goal. And that's the way it went for Roma. They ended up winning 3-1. Immobile got a goal for Lazio. And I think this is a huge one for Roma. It was big. Huge win. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Roma was playing bad. They just came off a, like a 4-0 win too, I think, Trojinone. But before that, I think they were winless uh, in their past six games. Yeah. Di Francesco was really on the hot seat. And it looked like they were looking for replacements. But now they just beat Lazio, their what? rivals. This game they was 4-0, so they're back on track. <laughs> the, the funny thing is that the Roma Derby, the Derby del Capitale, is more important than almost anything else. It's like so You true. win this match, yeah, yeah. and it means so true. much. Um, Lazio really are on... Um, a good track, but um, this game went to Roma. They took advantage of their chances. Roma played better. Better, yes. Yeah. Talking about teams that played better, Juventus 3-1 over Napoli. That was Napoli crazy. started off 1-0 after a mistake from, of course, Leonardo Bonucci. But after that, I think that's the only thing that Napoli did this whole match. To me, honestly, I know it's going to sound harsh, but Juventus were incredible. Probably one of the best performances that I've seen from them. After that one mistake... I don't really think Juventus made um, a step wrong. And I think that it could have been much a bigger scoreline if they did take advantage of their chances. Oh, okay, listen, Juve played very good. They played good. Uh, Napoli fell off the track once they got the goal up. Uh, you know, first of all, the goal Juve scored, uh, he was unmarked. Mandzukic was unmarked. When it was 2-1 at the time, uh, what do you call it? Kaya Horn had a golden chance one-on-one -on -one with Chesney. And, uh, maybe not one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh. No, it was But it we was, could, it it could have been... It could, he could have equalized making it 2-2. But they didn't capitalize on the chance. And then Juve just put the game away making it 2 You said there. it in a much nicer way. Uh, I, I didn't think... To me, it was always Juve were in control. Yes, obviously, no, football, Juve, Juve football is about Juve taking control. opportunities That's when you true. get those chances. And yes, it was 2-1 at a point where Calhoun could have scored could have and put it away exactly. and buried it, and but he you, didn't. Exactly. And also, Juve had a lot of chances. Ronaldo That's involved true. in all three goals. Two assists. Some might say the third one, um, even though he probably didn't mean to even do the third one. And the second one was um, a shot that was deflected. I know Michael <laughs> Michael was on the fence on this one. He didn't know if he should support Napoli or support Juve because he wanted Carnesi's in goal. Of course, Mike the Greek. Uh, hopefully Ancelotti play. knows for next time. You listen, Ospina if you don't play Cadenazzi, you did nothing yeah, wrong. only conceded three goals, Guys, nothing wrong, right? <laughs> Insigne was invisible, completely invisible. Um, very disappointed in him. Um, and then Ancelotti after the match, he actually said something funny. Oh my funny. god, that's, he's, he's um, hilarious. Juve fans were apparently booing him, which obviously we didn't realize. But he said, I advise them to go comfort themselves with the 2000, 2003 Champions League trophy. Um, which was Ancelotti. He, 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 he definitely was, he has a Twitter account. He's definitely, he was he's he definitely was a troll on a Twitter account. Or um, that but for Napoli, six points is the lead at the top already for Scudetto. I know we have some questions later, so I'm not going to go jump into that. Is mm -hmm. a Scudetto over? Because I know that we have that question. But again, Mandzukic proving how important he is. Cancelo, um, incredible right back, who was a huge signing for Juventus. And all in all, this looks like one of the best Juves that we've seen in a long time with a lot That's of confidence. True. But guys, let me remind you real quick while we're in the middle of this, before we move on, we will have a podcast tomorrow where we'll go into depth of all the games. This is just like a little a touch, little warm a little right antipasto here, right? <laughs> for what the Serie A was. And then if you want to hear more, we'll have on our podcast with Antonio, who's already calling us going crazy because he's excited for to talk. Um, next thing, Marotta, he left Juventus. We'll just throw that in real quick. Um, he, he says that he's stepping down as CEO. He'll take charge still as director until the end of October. Mm -hmm. There were rumors that he's going to be the president of the Italian Federation 
but have since been said that Agnelli wanted Marotta out and Juve is just looking to revamp the team. I don't think we should go into depth in this. I think we'll that we'll make a video yeah. on Tuesday going into depth. So if you want to see that, let us know in the comments below and let us know any questions you have and we'll make that video soon. Lautaro Martinez scored on his first shot. He scored his first goal for Inter. He's not going to be a Gabi goal like everybody was saying. This he is scored. great. Look, Icardi can stay in the bench and they finally have another striker that can take over with him, with him and Icardi can get some resting time. Inter are in fourth place now, Inter's which, is, good. which is good. They needed this win. Come in the win. Champions League. Well, not really simple. You know, yeah. it, it could have got ugly, but they did finish off 2-0 and the Champions League is coming. I, I'm excited for that. I Me want too. so well, many jam-packed matches. I want to hear what Peter has to say on his preview for the Champions League and also mm -hmm. for um, Cagliari, I would say that Barella had one of probably the standout game for Cagliari, but all in all, he, he um, we'll does. dive more into this game with Peter on the podcast. Federico Chiesa did oh, something boy. that we're pretty disappointed about. And of course, we have to address it um, in their match against Atalanta, Fiorentina's match against Atalanta. There was a penalty given to Fiorentina where Chiesa clearly took a dive. He looked like a Neymar yeah, in the was, World that Cup. That was so bad. That and was so um, bad. Fiorentina ended up scoring. They ended up winning the match 2-1. Of course, this does come into play. 2-0, two, I think. 2-0, sorry. Two zero, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, disappointed in Chiesa. He was, you know, criticized last week for constantly, you know, um, complaining yeah, against complaining Inter. And, and I stood off for him because I didn't think that he was complaining too much. But this time, even though he's our young Italian player, whatever, when you do something wrong, you deserve to suffer the consequences. Why isn't VAR checked? Number one, right, Mike? That's, so, okay. Look, look, show them the shirt that we made. We <laughs> oh, made yeah. the shirt for Good moments call. like these. And um, VAR fanculo. Yo, come on. Like, they even asked, um, Gasparini said, why isn't VAR looked at? Why isn't VAR looked at? Mike, there's only one thing to say. Right here, guys. VAR fanculo, right here. Why pull your mic out. Pull your mic out. Oh, you guys see Hopefully you guys see him. There we go. But, uh, yeah, we made these shirts. Pretty funny. I, a lot of people like them, actually. But I just want to talk about Kiez a little bit. He has so much talent for that, Zuri. He, for, you know, for Italian football. He doesn't have to do this I stuff. Agree. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And why didn't he... He, okay, he did it. It's a mistake. You should stand up and be like, listen. These, but yo, you should even, stand up and say it. Be like, listen, it's not a penalty. I made a mistake. I flopped and that's it. What, what about same thing with Desena? Desena. Oh, I don't remember his name. Desena. That he yeah, scored yeah, for freaking Cali. He, he hit his hand for, uh, in, against Inter. Yes. Hit he his scored, hand and went in. VAR yeah. obviously came in clutch and pulled it away. But this guy is the captain of the team. He goes, takes his shirt off, goes, celebrates, and goes nuts. Yo, dude, there's VAR. You look so uneducated when you go do that. You should, you're celebrating a goal with your hand. And I know after the game, he stood up for himself. He said, listen, it's not every day that you score at San Siro. He said, it hit my side, then it hit my hand. He said, adrenaline happened, and I didn't even realize that it was that. But it's not a good look, and I think that actions do need to be taken against Chiesa. And Dosena Do 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 was given a yellow card after he did that. Piontek. Piontek is a proper way to pronounce it. That's As we've right. been told, we're calling him Piatek. But it's Piontek and eight goals in seven games. Europe's top striker. And if we include all competitions, which is Coppa Italia, where he scored four goals against Lecce, 12 goals in eight matches. This kid is for real. 23-year-old Polish striker. Possibly the next Lewandowski. Top goal scorer of Europe, Europe. guys. That's incredible. Listen, they got him for like we, four million. We posted on our Instagram. We said in August. I remember editing this video. It took me like two hours to edit. And I was like, oh my God, I'm <laughs> making this for no reason. It has a reason. Because I could go back to that video. Everyone was making fun of us for hyping this kid up. And I was a little bit scared that he was going to be a fluke. But he is not. He's a he is killer. scoring in one of the He's hardest leagues in the world. Their president of Genoa already said, first second that I saw him, he said, I watched him play one time and I bought him. I think four and a half million euros. And then he said, watch how much I sell him for. There's Juventus. There's big teams in Europe already wanting him. Gazeta says you that think, Juve are making contacts to try to sign him. Do you think him. he's going to stay till the end of the yes, season? Yes, 100%. You he think needs so? to. Yes. Okay. Parma. Gervinho is on fire. Three goals in five games. This guy says, he says, I love Italy. I love the competition. I love this country. And, of course, because look how he's, he's, he's so dominating good. the Serie A. You know, the goal he scored today, it was a near post shot. And this guy has an extra lung. I'm serious. He does he not does. stop running. Came with an injury. Early. With an injury. Oh, he's playing right. yeah, with yeah, an injury. Yeah, yeah. Let wow. me remind you. He's a beast. Milan. It was a good day for Gattuso. Got a 4-1 win over Sassuolo. A Sassuolo who's coming into this 
third or fourth place? Something like that, yeah. De Zerbi and his team are high on confidence. I'm they surprised. are very in form, but Milan did do the job and they made it look easy against Sassuolo. They did make it look easy. Listen, Milan was struggling a little bit and no this was going in. And Cutrone was out. They didn't have 90%. They didn't injured. have a number nine at all. Castillejo. So they, so they had to play a false nine with Castillejo. Gattuso was in dire need of a win, and that's what they did. They made it, and they weren't even uh, going crazy to the end. They they pretty much put their foot on the gas, and they kept it there. They didn't let them get back in the game, and Gattuso got got those three points. That's what and Milan needs. They they've been uh, all, all this time. They've been scoring, and then they concede late on or tying late on. So yeah. this is a refreshing to and, see from Milan. And Kessia's goal was just brilliant. He started on one side of the pitch and ended it up on yeah, the other. Let's go to some uh, questions from Twitter. Uh, NY Juve says, will, who will Juventus end their streak? Who will end Juve's streak? Ooh. I think that um, it'll come down to one of the Milan clubs at the end of the day. I don't think that Napoli do have enough. But again, it's very early on in the season. Tim asks, will Lazio ever get out of Roma's shadow? Mike, what do you uh, got to say to that? Dude, it needs time. I mean, look, we're almost They're not in their shadow. I they're, really don't think they're, they're in their shadow. Listen, Lazio, La say. Lazio's the... Okay, you can say historically they are. But, you know, in, in the coming seasons, uh, Inzaghi's a good coach. Um, they have great players. They kept Milinkovic Savic. They just need time and they, they need more money coming around through the club. Tata has been doing great things for them. I think if you give them uh, some time, uh, they'll take... No, nah, anyway. they, they have a good team. They have a good team. <laughs> but that, that, that was a run on. No paid says, what does Beppe's departure mean for Juventus? What will be the transfer strategy from now on? To be honest, Marotta was the CEO of Juventus. He stepped aside as a director. Um, he was in charge, obviously, of signing players. And mm -hmm. there's a huge list, and we made a post on it, of all the players that he signed for cheap. I mean, we made this team that, he's, that he made for $300 million, $300 million and change. Um, which is just ridiculous. And the amount of players we had to leave off, Vidal, Sturaro, Padoin, all the legends that we had to leave off was just um, incredible. Um, no paid again. He gave another good question. He says, should Milan fire Rino and get Conte? I would say no. Not now. No, not now. no, no, no. Um, or wait for this season to be over. Thoughts on Lautaro Martinez's first goal? We said that. Are Juve already champions? No. Come, Come on, on, it's dude. way too hard. It's not people, even 10 rounds. <laughs> people get too excited. Like, yeah. anything could change. Anything could happen. And can Parma finish in top 10? Top 10? Ooh. That's yes. a bold one. I think they can. I Listen, this know. is a team... This I is, say 11th, maybe 12. I don't know about 10. So many Juve questions. Last one. Sete Numero says, is Juve currently the best team in the world? I say yes. But they Most do need... Most They important. need to prove it on the pitch. It's the first time that... They have the best players in almost every single position. On They're paper, playing well. Yeah. They have confidence. There's and a synergy statistically around them. Too. Statistically, and statistically, they they're the, the only team, team yeah. that's so statistic won statistic every yeah. single game in all competitions, wow. which is ridiculous. And they're playing young boys, right? Bambini and, uh, for the Champions League with, with no Ronaldo, too. Yes. So Ronaldo's we'll out. We have Champions League coming up. We do have a podcast still coming. But if you guys do enjoy these quick little videos that give a brush on the Serie A, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you are new. And also, if you want to copy your cultural merch, ItalianFootballTV.com. We only have a few guys. We're running out of these Vodafone shirts. We're gonna put it in the description if you want to pick one up. If you want to, head on over there. But please jump in the comments. The community, IFTV is about community, so you guys gotta be involved. Jump in the comments. As always, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, guys. Ciao, guys.